Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. is entitled Focus on Me Galley, as proudly we hail Silver Star winner Major George McKay, Jet Photo Reconnaissance Pilot, and all the officers and men of the 67th Tactical Reconnaissance Group, U.S. Air Force. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, young men, you can be flying the fastest, most modern jets within 18 months as an Air Force aviation cadet. Jets are easy to fly, safe, too, when you learn the aviation cadet way. The Air Force spares no pains to give its future pilots the finest, most thorough aviation training in the world. It's not easy work, not by any means. It takes a good man to make the grade, but the rewards are worth it. Here's what you'll get when you complete training. The silver wings of an Air Force lieutenant, earnings of more than $5,000 a year, and an unlimited opportunity for leadership in the jet age. If you're interested in a career in flying, begin as an aviation cadet. To qualify, you must be between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, single, and a high school graduate. For further details, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station immediately. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Focus on MIG Alley. It is the mission of tactical reconnaissance to obtain by visual, photographic, and electronic means from the air by day and night all information that is of value to the air ground team for the planning, accomplishing, and assessing of tactical operations against the enemy. That's what the book says. That means if you're a reconnaissance pilot like Major George McKay, you fly day and night, good weather and foul, to keep tabs on the enemy. How important is this? Well, you and the other boys in the 67th Tactical Reconnaissance Group supplied 90% of the intelligence information going to UN forces in Korea. Here's an example. It all started in Seoul, a joint operations center, the nerve center of 5th Air Force, 8th Army Air Ground Operations. It was 1100 when the JOC Combat Operations Officer, Colonel Blood, got a phone call from the intelligence officer of the 4th Fighter Interceptor Group. Colonel Blunt speaking. Major Riker here, Colonel. What have you got, Major? Trouble, Colonel, trouble. What kind of trouble? Mix. Our Sabre Jet boys report a high MIG count this morning. Where? Well, both our morning flights report the same thing. Lots of MIGs parked the red fields across the yellow at Antung and Tatung Ku. Bringing in reinforcements, are they? Right. We figure they've got 200 MIGs at Tatung Ku, about uh, 300 at Antung. Mm, that is high. And that's not all, sir. That's enough. Our boys say they also saw twin-engine bombers on the ramps. A lot of them. Bombers? Are you sure? That's what they said, about 140. 140? The Reds never had nearly that number of bombers or MiGs either, for that matter. Well, just passing it along for what it's worth, Colonel. Of course, a visual count like this isn't always too reliable. Visibility being what it is from 30,000 feet across the Yalu to Antung, but... I understand, Major. With all those bombers the Reds might be fixing to hit our airfields. That's what we figured. And all those MiGs... They could clobber our Suyo dam strike this afternoon. Yeah, and that dam is less than 100 miles from those red fields. Well, Major, we've got to get a reliable MiG count before sending out this afternoon's strike. Well, we have another Sabre jet patrol due back any minute. Won't do. I'm going to check with my operations deputy in intelligence here. But there's only one way to handle this. What's that, sir? I'm going to call Colonel Day's rec wing. We need immediate photo reconnaissance corroboration. Colonel Day speaking. Colonel Blood here, Jim. Hey, what can we do for you? We need an immediate photo reconnaissance. Roger. Where? A 
Well, this is a tough one, Jim. Antung and Tatung Koo. Uh, what's the scoop? Sabre boys report a high MIG count on those fields this morning. Also, 140 twin-engine bombers. Mm, sounds like they had a busy morning. It's this afternoon I'm interested in, if you follow me. I understand, Colonel. I'll notify Colonel Smith's rec group right away to get one of his best men off the ground. Call Baker over at the 4th Fighter Interceptor Group. He's been alerted to furnish your man with an escort. Right. We'll call you as soon as we get a picture. Probably inside of two hours. Good deal. I'll be standing by to hear. Colonel Smith. Jim Day here. Got a hot one for you. JOC wants a wreck mission at once. Now, here are your instructions. Sergeant, find Major McKay and bring him here right away. And have Airman Gilbert get fourth fighter interceptor on the phone. While the sergeant located you, your colonel called the fourth fighter interceptor group, Colonel Royal Baker. The fourth is just on the other side of your field at Kimpo, outside of Seoul. Just had a call from Colonel Day at Wing Operations. GOC wants a photo mission sent up immediately. Yes, Bob. Operations people just told me about it. Up to Antung and Tarunku. That's the baby, all uh, right. What kind of cover do you want for your boy? Normal cover ought to do it. Twelve high cover at 35,000. Eight medium cover at 20, 25,000. And four right with your photo boy, okay? Who's it going to be? One of our best, Major McKay. We'll take good care of him. You sent for me, Colonel? Well, McKay just came in. I'll send him right over. Good. We'll be starting briefing pretty soon. Five minutes tops. Right. Bye. George, better get into your flight gear right away. What's up, Colonel? You're going to take some pictures of Antung and Tatung Ku. You take off in 15 minutes. And that's how you first learn what sort of work you'd be doing that day. A few minutes later, you're dressed for work. Your colonel's checked you out on what he knows about the mission, and you're in a jeep bouncing across Kimpo Field to the briefing shack of the 4th Fighter Interceptor Group to meet the Sabre Jet boys who'll be your escort. Outside, there's an old friend of yours, Captain Ralph Banks. Hey, George! George McKay! Hey, what do you say, Ralph? Boy? Oh, I might have guessed you'd you? be the wreck pilot on a deal like this. Yeah, Roger, right. sure. we don't send boys on a man's job. There are going to be 24 of us Sabre Jets to make sure you do that job. Well, with what I've been told about the high MIG count, I'll need every one of you. Remember, I haven't got any guns. Buddy, that's one thing I can't forget. <laughs> what is it you guys say? Alone, unarmed, and unafraid. No, no, no. We say alone, unarmed, and unafraid. Ha, ha, ha. Well, this time, at least you're not alone. Oh, buddy, I don't want to ever be alone in MIG Alley. You and me both, guns or no guns. Uh, briefing about to start? Yeah, any minute. Squadron commander just went inside. Well, then let's us get inside and get the dope, huh? Fine. And Dick Ayersman will be the formation leader. Oh? I'll be your close cover leader. Well, suits me. You've got me back in one piece before. I'll well, try to do the same this trip. Hope so. J.O.C. wants pictures of Antung and Tatung Koo real bad. <laughs> Briefing is a matter of giving you and your escort all the information on hand which will enable you all to perform your mission and return safely. You sit in the crowded room, jotting some dope down on your mission card, filing other facts in the back of your mind. First, the group operations officer gives you all your start engines time, 11.35, takeoff time, 11.45, in and out routes to target, flight altitude, then the intelligence officer. All right, gentlemen. Let me have your attention, please. This is not a routine photo wreck mission. It's high priority, ordered about half an hour ago by Joint Operations Center for photo corroboration of an unusually high Megan bomber count that we reported on Antung and Tatungku fields earlier this morning. JOC must have pictures of those fields as soon as possible. Now, you 24 Sabre Jets are escorting McKay to see that he gets his pictures and brings them back. Because if the MIG count is as high as we think... The Suiho Dam fighter-bomber strike will have to be called off this afternoon. And if those bombers are on those fields, we can expect our UN fields to be hit. So fewer sabers will be available to escort the fighter-bombers on whatever strike is mounted, because the 86s will be needed for interception here at base. Fifth Air Force can't make a decision until they have McKay's pictures. Now, since McKay's in an RF-80, the rest of you are in 86s, he'll be spotted by the MiGs right away and they'll go after him. You're to stop him. 
Now, you can expect to be outnumbered, and you can expect plenty of flack here at areas B, C, and F, and all along the yellow in front of both Antung and Tatung Ku. Any questions? No, no questions. Intelligence has just told you all that's really important. Plenty of migs and plenty of flack, and the Reds will be determined to stop you from getting your pictures, as determined as you'll be to get them. Then the formation leader, Major Erisman, takes over. I'll lead the high cover of 12 at Angel's 30. Brian will lead the 8 medium cover at 20,000. And the bank's flight will take care of close cover, sticking with McKay all the time. You're all familiar with how the MiGs operate on a mission of this type, so there's nothing new on your evasion tactics. Radio will go to Baker Channel after takeoff, Charlie Channel approaching the target area. Now, one thing, if you get hit, try to make the west coast where you... And that wraps up the briefing. On the way out, Banks gives you a nudge. Uh, you're in good hands, buddy. We'll get those pictures. Uh, no sweat. What kind of camera you got in there today? Long range, K-22 in the nose. Oh, that means you'll be making runs right at the target, pointing your buggy like on a gunnery run, right? Mm, affirmative. Forward oblique, we call it. What altitude? Well, I'll start my runs at 10,000, break off at 6. There's no need for us to go up any higher than 20,000, then. We can let down to 10,000 when you give the word. Good deal, buddy. See you upstairs. Right, right. Ten minutes. So now it's all set up. You go back to your side of the field, climb into your RF-80, a shooting star stripped of its guns and armed with only camera and film. Take off, and soon you've joined up on Banks and his boys, heading north with them hovering protectively about you. As you cross the bomb line, you can hear the formation leader, Ayersman, reporting in the entire formation to Tactical Air Direction Center. Fireball, this is early bird leader, over. Fireball here, early bird leader, go ahead. Fireball, this is Early Bird Leader, inbound, 6712, over. Roger, Early Bird and out. That means the formation leader heads an escort for the 67th TAC rec group, and it's the 67th 12th sortie of the day. You look up through your canopy and see 12 high-power, swept-wing saber jets glinting silvery high above at 30,000. Below them, eight medium cover boys, and near you are your close cover. They're all there to run interference for you, and suddenly you feel protected and important, like a star halfback. But it only lasts a minute. You're in MIG Alley now, and trouble is on its way. Ahead, just across the yellow, you can see the red airfields, and trouble is on its way for sure. Five minutes from the target, the trouble crackles in your headsets. Tally ho! Bandits! Three o'clock! High! How high, early bird two? Very high, early bird leader, coming out of the sun. Roger, two. Have them in sight. There's a real lot of them. Must be 25. Settle down, two. Wait till they make their move. That's what they're doing. Starting their run. Turn into them, boys. Sticking with you. Turning. Now! And as you look up to see a swarm of eggs smash through your top cover and blacken the sky with swirling silver dogfights, you hear Banks' wingman. Red leader, we got bandits with us. Nine o'clock. Roger, Red, two. I see him. They got McKay spotted. They're on our tail. Break. Break, McKay, break! You are listening to the proudly we hail production Focus on MIG Alley. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Here's an important announcement for high school graduates. If you can qualify as an aviation cadet, you can become a commissioned officer in the Air Force. You'll earn more than $5,000 a year. As an aviation cadet, you'll get the most thorough training in the world in the new field of jet aviation. You'll be flying jets yourself within 18 months, flying easily and safely a skilled jet pilot with a new world of aviation before you. The training is rugged, the discipline rigid. But when you graduate with a commission, you'll have a career ahead of you that will take you far in both military and commercial aviation. If you are between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, single and a high school graduate, you can qualify for this training and for a wonderful jet future. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Focus on MIG Alley. You're in the middle of a score of dogfights in MIG Alley, and no guns in your photo reconnaissance jet plane. In your earphones, you can hear the battles raging about you. Red 3, there's a guy on your tail. Watch him. Break. He needs help, Red Leader. Those are your close cover boys. Supposed to stick right with you all the time if they can. 
But they've got too much to handle right now. McKay, break! Striking! Too late! There's one on you! And as you bank and yank your ship around, a red-hot stream of cannon shells curve over your canopy, and an ugly, red-nosed, high-tailed mig zooms under you. With no guns, that's all you can do. Evasive tactics, they call it. Let's settle down, boys! Got those bogies at 4 o'clock, early bird 3? He's got them, early bird leader. How about tail end Charlie down there? He's breaking to the right. I'm going after him. Sticking on your wing, early bird. Stay there and watch he doesn't pop his brakes. You nailed him. There goes his hot seat. Barely hit him and he hits his panic button. There goes his shoot. That's one down. Let's go back upstairs where we belong. While the dogfights cover the sky, you reach the first photo target, Antung. It sits right across the river with more jets than you ever saw before parked on the big field. You're anxious to get in there quick, take your picture, move to your next target and get on home. All those jets. You call Banks. Red one, this is Red five, over. Red five, this is Red one, go ahead. Letting down to 10,000 now to start my photo run. Roger. My wingman and I'll cover you. The other two boys are busy. Understand. Here we go. You let down carefully to 10,000 so that you'll be in the proper position when you start your run. Proper position means you finish your run so that you won't end up in Red Manchuria air. At 10,000, you call Banks. Red leader, this is Red 5. How's it look? No MiGs now. Make it fast. This is Red 2, Red leader. Bandits high at 9 o'clock. I have them in sight, Red 2. Can you make them, McKay? Yeah, going in, then. Stick, huh? No sweat. You push the stick forward, slanting sharply toward the Antung field in your windshield. Scores of flying and photographic calculations flashing through your mind. Wing level, the plane must be a perfect camera platform. Wind drift, so you stay on course. Angle of approach, no skidding. You're in your run now. A forward oblique now, which means that the camera in the nose of the ship is shooting down and angled ahead. And you've hit the toggle switch that starts the camera. The green light on your instrument panel is bleaking every three seconds, indicating the times your K-22 is actually photographing. It's like a bomb run. Once started, you can't deviate from your path. So you forget about MiGs and flak and keep the plane true on course, down from 10,000 to 9,000, 8,000, 7,000, concentrating on the target. On the runway, you can see three pairs of MiGs, one pair perched on the edge, lining up for takeoff, another pair rushing down into the wind, and another soaring swiftly from the end of the runway, airborne, pointing skywards to join the attack, the attack on you. But now it's 6,000. You turn your switch off and scream up in a roaring chandelle to regain altitude and head for target number two down the river, Tatung Ku. Red five, did you get your pictures? Have, yes. Good pictures, Red Leader. Need you take some more. Negative, buddy. That run was enough for here. Good deal. Then let's haul out of here down to the next target for a run there. Roger, buddy. Up to 10,000 again. There she is, buddy. Tatung Ku. Yeah, looks like they got as many jets as Antung. Yeah. See any twin-engine bombers? Not yet, but they may show in the picture. You ready to start your run? I've got 10,000. Affirmative. Starting run now. Stick again, huh? We may not be so lucky this time. You can say again. Bandits, 12 o'clock high. Take them, Banks. Turning into them, Red 2. Too late, Red Leader. Oh, here they are. Screaming down out of the sun before your escort could get between you and them, two fat, deadly makes draw beads on you, and now you feel absolutely naked. You really miss not having guns now. With guns, you could fight back. But photo wreck pilots aren't supposed to fight back. They're supposed to evade and deliver their pictures home. So you evade, using every trick in the book, some that haven't been written and many you never thought of until this sweating, fearful, vulnerable moment. As they slant down to you, you start a slow turn to give them an easy deflection shot. And just as they're about to start firing, you break sharply to the left. Bank, yank, and then pop your dive flaps and watch the murderous pair shoot past and away. Nice going, McKay. You got rid of them. Yeah, they almost got rid of me, buddy. Ready for another try? How's it look? Looks clear to me, Red Leader. Look again, Red. Two, six o'clock medium. I see him, Red Leader. Ten of them. They're starting the runs. We can take these babies. Let's go. I'm going too, buddy. Keep those boys busy. 
So again, you start into your run, pointing the nose in its camera, Tatung Ku Field across the Yalu, keeping your plane on the slanting run you're committed to. Over your left shoulder, you see two Mings whistling down in neat firing passes, the red glowing embers of their cannon shells marching closer and closer to your tail. And as they skid out of their diving banks, the shells shoot out ahead of you. And then another pair of MiGs run on you from the right. And then you're at 6,000 feet, not a minute too soon. And you break sharply into the curve of the downpouring MiGs, jam your throttle to the firewall, and roar down and away in a screaming, turning dive as the MiGs shoot over your canopy. And then suddenly it's all over for you, and you're alone on the deck. Far overhead, the sky is marked with vapor trails and flak bursts and distant battling silver planes. You've got your pictures. You want out. Red leader, this is Red 5. Do you read me? Loud and clear, Red 5. Over. I'm ready for home. How about getting me there? Gathering up my little flock now, Red 5. You have me in sight? Affirmative, Red 5. Joining up on you now. How about the rest of the formation? Early Bird and his high and low cover boys are in a hassle right now. They can't leave. Now let the Tigers stay. I'm ready to return to Pigeon. Right. We're with you. Make sure you get those pictures in the soup and develop. Good deal. I'd hate for anything to happen to them now. A minute later, your close cover is grouped about you. You need them because your job is only half done now. The fighter bombers and fighter interceptors do their job at the target. But it's no good if you get to the target and then don't bring your pictures back home. It would be a waste, a tragic waste. So your escort stays with you faithfully until you're home. On the ground, your camera is taken from the nose of the plane and into the photo lab. And you go into your 15 squadron intelligence room for debriefing. You're tired and sweat soaked and would like nothing better than a cold shower and a cold drink. But you've got an intensive cross-examination to go through first, debriefing. No point is too small for the intelligence officer. No casual answer will satisfy him like this. You, um, you say it was rough? Yeah, yeah, I'd say it was rough. How do you mean rough? In what way? Oh, MiGs, mostly. How many MiGs? Well, I didn't get a chance to actually count them. Well, were there 20, 30, 40? Well, the first bunch that bounced me, I'd say maybe 30. When was that? Hmm. About ten minutes out of Anton. Are you sure it was ten minutes? That's pretty far out for them. Well, maybe closer to five minutes. Where'd they attack from? High cover spotted them. Three o'clock high, they said. Mm, three o'clock. Mm -hmm. Compass direction? East. How high? Well, they said very high. Must have been close to 40,000 feet since high cover was at 30,000. You sure high cover was at 30,000? Where were you? And so it goes. And then you get down to the business of the target. After you give him your visual count of MiGs and twin engine bombers and anything new you saw at either fields, he lets you go. You go over to the photo lab to see what's happened to your pictures. Colonel Smith and you enter together. Inside, all sorts of people are waiting for the results. Everybody's heard about the mission. How's it go up there, George? Well, I ran into a little trouble. I heard it was something more than a little. Couldn't have been too rough, Colonel. I got the pictures. Think they'll turn out? Sure of it. Good man. <laughs> Hey, where's my photo interpreter? Right here, sir. Ah, oh, Lieutenant Burns. McKay's picture's ready yet? In the wash now. Sergeant says any minute. I will read them wet. Print them up later. That's what we figured, Colonel. In the meantime, get Colonel Day over at wing on the line. Yes, sir. Colonel Blood at JOC is waiting for the dope now. Yeah, so they tell me. Well, we hurried all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you did. On the way back, especially. Oh, ball and jack all the way, Colonel. Uh, Comet, I'm calling for Colonel Day. Give me Starfire. Were those 86 boys right about that high MIG count, George? I'm pretty close from what I could make visually. Uh, Starfire, Colonel Smith calling. Give me 621. Uh, we'll soon know for sure. 621, Colonel Smith calling. Uh, I'd like to speak to Colonel Day. <laughs> Colonel Smith calling, sir. Just a minute, please. Colonel Smith, Colonel Day's in the line. Smith here, Colonel. Got the dope, Bob? Any minute in the wash now. Thanks, Sergeant. Just slap it down the table here. And turn the light on under the glass. Just putting it on the table now, Colonel. Hold on and I'll give you a count. Let's see now. And tongue, there are 37 MiG-15s swept wings in the marshalling area in the east end of the main runway. There are... Now hold it, Burns. Yeah. Colonel, we have 37 MiGs at Antung, east end of runway. Uh, go ahead, Burns. On the uh, parking ramp on north side of runway, 48, 
48 single-engine MiG-15 type aircraft. 48 MiGs on parking ramp on north side of the runway. There are about only eight twin-engine type jet bombers at Antung. Ten of them at Tatung Ku. Anything else, Burns? Well, that's it, till I can make a more detailed study of the print. That's the poop so far, Colonel. Well, thanks a lot. We sure appreciate it. That's our job, Colonel. Yeah, pretty fast, even for you boys. Hour and three quarters from when I phoned you is pretty good. I'll tell McKay here. He took the pictures. Uh, how soon can we get the prints? We'll start running them off now. Have them to you by courier in two hours tops, plus a more detailed photo interpreter report. Good deal. You know, I'm glad that bomber report was wrong. But you've still got a high MIG count. Yeah. Certain things may be changed this afternoon. Understand. Bye. Thanks again. Bye. <laughs> Your job is completed now. The printers and dryers and photo interpreters and couriers and then JOC take it from here. And everyone was pleased with the results. Your pictures corroborated the unusually high MIG count. That being the case, JOC called off the Suiho Dam strike. I'm glad they did. That dam is pretty close to their MIG bases. The pictures also showed those fields are still strictly MIG bases. Oh, no twin-engine bombers like we thought. Not many more than usual, very few. Oh, well, that's good news. At least we won't be bombed ourselves for a while. Yeah. And what sort of strike did JOC send out instead of the dam? One to North Korean headquarters at Pyongyang, another against supply concentrations at Wonsan. Oh, well, that's a little further away from those red fields. Good move. How'd they do? Great. As far as our wreck pilot there could tell from his before and after visual... Oh. You reconnaissance guys are everywhere. Well, we also had a couple of photo Joes up there for bomb damage assessment, but our photo interpreters haven't finished their report yet. A variety, George. That's what we have in this outfit. I believe it. (laughs) Those guys you got flying for you, Colonel, they're quite a bunch. Yeah, they're quite a bunch. Our nation's future lies in the skies. Get in on this exciting future as an Air Force aviation cadet. Be a leader in this coming movement. If you can qualify, you'll be trained in the latest aviation techniques, learning with pay. It won't be easy, of course. It takes hard work, intelligence, and initiative. But if you make the grade, you'll receive the silver wings of an Air Force lieutenant within a year, wings that are your keys to leadership in an air age. To qualify for this opportunity, you must be between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, single, and a high school graduate. If you can measure up, see your local Army and Air Force recruiting officer today. It's an air future. Win your place in it now as an aviation cadet. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail.